What's going on, y'all? Ground and Motivate back in this thing again, man, with another video. And we got your boy DJ Academics in the crosshairs one more game because he is in constant internet beef with everybody. And he just makes for entertaining content all the time, man. You know, your boy DJ Academics is a walking contradiction. He's a walking billboard of, not, of what not to do. And the people that he's going against are even some specimens in their own right that are just not the coolest people this time he's going against the no jumper crew well adam 22 specifically it all started because his uh his protege flaco another fat kind of dj academics light you know interviewed a guy named saint in the center they have a little beef dj academics somehow decided to go at flaco instead of saint in the center which, I mean, I can understand why he's mad at Flacco, but why haven't you addressed your beef with Saint and Center in the first place? I don't get it. I don't understand why he skips and jumps over certain people and he goes for the week. Well, we know why, but, you know, finish what you, you know, topple somebody real, man. If you topple Saint and Center like you went and found some info about his family or found some info about him really being broke or found some info about him really being sorry or you maybe y'all met up and you knocked him out in a fight or something on the street, Boy, I have a little bit more respect for you. You'll still be lame, but I have more respect for you. If you got down, I guess, topple no jumper or something, I guess like maybe you roast up Adam real good and something like that, flame him up. I have a little more respect for you, but you will still won't be cool, but you'll still be much more respected than you are now, man. Right now, you're just like a fat, drunk dude, look like a chipmunk, always complaining, always yelling, talking about big act when you ain't really nothing. But let's go ahead and see what he has to say here about the no jumper crew and Adam 22. I think this is what they said. Let me yeah, see. Look. I, I just hope that. Hold on, hold on. Wait, wait. I'm out of music. I'm trying to do something. I'll do it. That 2018 interview with the No Jumper. That was in 2018? Mm-hmm. Okay. That was in 2018. So that was right when you was trying to make that transition, but you were still addicted at the time. Yeah, I was addicted. Now, honestly, I, I came to that video like that because I was like, man, if I come to this interview drunk, it'll go viral. So you did that on purpose? Yeah, I did it on purpose. But he, he, the, the host of those jumpers looked like he was faded too. I don't know. Or was he faking? I, I really can't remember that interview, but this is all I know. If I'm an interviewer and somebody, I come in my door, he's, this is what he say, well, the camera's already on. It would have never gone down. Yeah, it wouldn't have. It wouldn't have. I would have been like, you gotta go home and, and sober up. And, and I seen some. I seen some comments. They'd be like, Adam did try to stop the interview. Try to. If I was Adam, it wouldn't have been no interview in the first place. He wouldn't have came in my building. I'm like, bro, you gotta go home. I feel that he profited <laughs> so much off of our culture. Boy, stop it. You knew he was going, bro. You was going to Adam 22, no jumper. You weren't going to like some prim and proper podcast where they talk about real life and solutions to problems that everyday people are going through you are going on no jumper where they talk about how many dudes has this girl busting one night how many pricks can she suck in five minutes how many drugs is adam 22 and all his friends done in one day they're not talking about anything that's productive they're talking about what's the latest rap news it's more so an entertainment podcast they're talking about rap news What's the latest drama over here? What's going on over there? They ain't talking about nothing like, oh yeah, man, we're just we're trying to help people get their lives together. So when you went on there, bro, you knew what was up, bro. You knew Adam 22 was gonna go in there and get that entertainment going. Adam 22, even even if he's running around here on some fake stuff talking about some man, I tried to stop him. No, you didn't, Adam, because you would have stopped him. The interview just wouldn't have went through. But you want entertainment. You're a culture vulture, Adam. You just want to go ahead and make us look as stupid as possible. And that's also for boom, boom. You don't get a pass. You're one of the original Jester Coons of black American culture. You used to be on World Star acting a fool because you know white folks look at World Star like it's the encyclopedia for black people because they just don't have that 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 decipher game. They just they just can't do it. For some reason, they look at World Star as the end all be all for black people information. So they got on there, they looked at you, they was like, oh yeah, that's how black people are, huh? And you on there stealing and uh, putting tattoos all over your face and doing all kind of stupid stuff, jumping on Popeye's tables and uh, tearing up the stove and all that kind of stuff. But you was the original Jester Coon. Before that was Gideon and Kaisenot, there was you. You made your whole splash off trying to be a Jester Coon, trying to get in here and get, get some clout, get some views, go viral. That's what you did. 
And just like you said, bro, you went in there trying to do that. You made a fool for yourself, bro. That you should you shouldn't eat well. I mean, you should regret it because it looks silly, but that's what you was trying to do, bro. You can't be running around here expecting an Adam 22 to goddamn stop you. Anybody that decides they're going to go to an interview drunk or high and think somebody should stop them, you, sir, you, ma'am, are an idiot. You need to take accountability for yourself. So you don't need to be running around here acting like, oh, man, goddamn, <laughs> Adam should have got me right, man. I had to go in on you, bro. I'm glad you, you switched your life around. I even saw you when I was running one time. I seen you on the Jackson State Bridge filming your video. Yeah, man, but I'm glad you changed your life around and you're doing better. But, bro, you was a sucker then, bro. You was on some BS back then, bro. So let's not sit here and act like Adam-22 owes you something, bro. Like, that's going to be the first time, probably the last time I ever defend Adam-22. He's an idiot. He's a sucker. He's a culture vulture. But you was an idiot back then. Let's go. So, Hey, Adam, this is the point I'm trying to say, man. First of all, I don't fuck with... With, with Tasha K. And this is type of shit that's why I'm saying to me and you really not enemies. Bro, like, I gotta, like, it's unfortunate that I still gotta do this. I gotta put this in his terms. The same way you got Flacco interviewing some niggas saying weird shit about me. Imagine if I'm playing videos like this about you, bro. Bro, this is not really, this is a bullshit video. Book knew what the fuck he was doing and he had handlers who was benefiting off of him being drunk. I know this is a fact, but I could act delusional. I can sit here and be like, oh, well, I don't know. Maybe Adam's just a fucked up person. You're not. But I'm sitting here giving the context to it. You got your bitch ass employees, nigga, acting like they don't know what the fuck going on when it comes to me. Imagine if I was over here gassing and shit when it comes to you, bro. Well, you being a little hoe with misplaced aggression, to be honest, act. Because, yeah, I know you was like kind of felt betrayed by Flacco and all that kind of stuff. Because you're like, man, he was my protege. He's my little stuttering Stanley protege. And he wasn't supposed to have Satan in center on. But you really want to go at Adam. Yeah, we know he did, you dirty goddamn. You, uh, you know, you fell in love with a thought. She was your first love because you a sucker. You ain't never get no hoe before. So now, you know, you ran and you know, you, felt, you ran and got the first girl you could get when you got you some money. And then she came. And since she was a thought, like thoughts do, she went and bust on the first thing smoking. And Adam was one of the first things smoking. I think him and his girl went and bust your girl at the same damn time like future so you went out like a bit time sucker and somebody was saying yeah hey, hey, adam should he should i mean uh dj academic he shouldn't get mad at adam because yeah they have a business uh opportunity together so yeah so whether she's a thought or not it doesn't matter yes it does dog it does matter if i if my girlfriend happens to be a thought and you go out and you bust my girlfriend even though you know it's my girlfriend that's still disrespectful that's one of the most biggest plays that you could do to a man. You bust his girl knowing that he's that's his girl. And I don't really understand what kind of business relationship that these guys could have. There's no type of mutual benefit, no type of uh ben like any anything that would benefit them mutually. There's nothing there. DJ Academics has his very own situation. Adam 22 has his very own situation. Unless they have some extreme dirt on each other, like DJ Academics knows Adam busts three booties in one video and he just ain't put it on the internet. Or goddamn, Adam knows that DJ Academics strictly pays for it. And he was uh, you know, he was getting his prints up by 6ix9ine. Him and 6ix9ine have been having a little goddamn back and forth SE actual relationship or something like that. That's the only thing I could really understand them trying to hide from each other. Like it, it, otherwise, bro, you should just be going at Adam. you you got some, you know, you got some smoke with Adam. Go ahead and handle that. That don't make no sense. Let's go. Let's not act like I'm, I'm over here just like, oh, Akers is drunk. He don't know what he's talking Bro, there, Tasha K finna drop some shit with Boom, which they're painting you as some culture vulture who is an enabler, which, by the way, that's a rabbit hole. You know I, you know, you don't want to get down. Because I've talked to Lil Pump. He trying to go down that too. Let's not do that. Because I, like, I look at your history, and as much as whatever you've done, I don't feel like you're just some horrible person, but niggas is trying to paint you out to be that. And I don't let my, I don't use my platform to amplify these things, but you use your platform to amplify it about me. And you amplified it when you got your peon ass niggas. You should tell that nigga, for you talk about big act nigga, go sit out three weeks, nigga. Because suppose if I was in here, like, come on, if I really, like, remember when I was getting us, if I really was on some shit, I'd be gassing the shit out of this. And you know, when big act, locks in on some shit is going to be the topic of conversation it's going to be 
I don't really understand why this guy's defending Adam 22 like he's not a culture vulture. DJ Academics, you're kind of being a shucking and jiving dancing coon right now. I mean, I guess I don't know. Yeah, I think I'd say he's cooning because if, if, if Adam 22 was a black guy, then DJ Academics would go much harder. Adam 22 is a culture vulture, and DJ Academics is also equally a culture vulture. So maybe that's why he's not trying to paint him as the culture vulture because he knows he's one as well. And I'm not hating on like Caribbean folks or African folks. Especially the ones that, you know, they ain't on no BS like some of these folks do. But DJ Academics is the kind of guy who has literally made his name off of black American culture or black Americans in general. We're the people that supported him, even though he's lame, he's fat, he's drunk, he's not worth anything. And he still comes back and he he takes a, a big old dookie on us. He tells us, yeah, we're lazy. Yeah, we're this. Yeah, we're all that. He's always perpetuating all kind of silly narratives about black Americans and pushing that kind of stuff and, you know, igniting the fire. But then when stuff happens, he tries to, oh, man, no, nah, man, y'all shouldn't be doing that, man. You guys are bad. You guys shouldn't be doing that. Bro, you a sucker in so many ways. You a sucker, dog. Stop, stop dancing around Adam 22, bro. Just go at him. You keep on talking about his employees and all that kind of stuff. Go at Flacco. You already got Flacco fired, so there's no point in you keep on talking about it. Go at Adam. Let's go. But we ain't at war. I've been said that. So, bro, like, why do I even have to still explain this shit when I'm saying to you, why you got your bitch-ass employees, nigga, mentioning me with any type of shit that you know that would be detrimental to the overall narrative that really you know isn't true? Because if you thought it was true, we would talk about it. And if I thought it was true about you, I would talk to you about it. That's why I allow certain people to come on my platform and say shit about you. But, hey, what my nigga finesse two times say? It's cool when they do it, but it ain't cool when I do it. This I'm going I'm to throw, throw the question once again back in the air. Can I do the same thing? Because when I do the same thing, it hits a little bit different. You got Tasha K, who's a capper. But Boonk over here basically saying, yo, the lowest points of my life when I was an addict, when I was drugged out, when I shouldn't have been on camera, niggas like Adam22 took advantage of me, made content. See, I could act ignorant to that shit. Just like how when you sent me the shit about that Kelpie nigga, the nigga who got like punched 25 times in his face on camera, you told me, you said, man, I ain't gonna lie, this bitch ass nigga, he agreed, he told us he ain't gonna sue. Like he wants this to go out. I'm like, okay, all right, well, as much as niggas won't wanna blame you, the dude who got punched in the face wanted shit to go out. No, no, bro. Him interviewing the Stooges and it ain't nothing to do with me. But, like, bro, he got to do content. That's actually great content. Like, the Stooges don't talk. I have no problem with him interviewing um, whatever. Anyway. Um. Anyway, the point of what I'm trying to say is basically this. They're trying to put out narratives again. Like, you're some culture vulture. I don't believe you are. But that's me using cultural context because i know you and we talk privately and this and third and i feel like i know your heart and i hope i know your heart that that's not what it is but when it come to me you got every bitch ass nigga on your on your roster who would just say wild shit about me in the sense of like driving a narrative that i would never drive about you like nigga like what is what, what you trying to do so academics claims he doesn't have any animosity towards a few of the cast members on No Jumper, but I believe he does. I think he just doesn't want that, you know, he doesn't want that smoke with those guys. Because when you say kind of general things like that, it's like, yeah, you might not be specifying anything, but in the back of your head or really like deep down, you're kind of like, I want them to feel it like, man, yeah, I said he was a BAN, goddamn. I said he was a BAN. I want him to goddamn think, man, maybe, maybe I am one too, or maybe he's saying that about all of us, but he hasn't really said it about me, so... Yeah, I won't go at him. That's what that's kind of what it is. When you think about that. Think about, you know, sometime where you might have did that. Like, you know, you might have said, yeah, all, all these kind of suckers that do this. Yeah, you may not mean everybody, but at the same time, you do you do kind of want them folks to feel hit a little bit. So I think he is, he does have, you know, he does kind of want to, you know, go at all the whole no jumper crew. You know, and that's why he keeps on talking about some, you know, they they hire, he, I mean, out of 22's hired all crackheads and suckers and losers and stuff like that. I mean, yeah, he if, if he really felt that way, he would constantly always be like, man, yeah, he, he, would just, he would just say the exact people that he feels that way about. 
He probably feels that way about the little almighty dude. Probably feels that way about the lush dude, the little white boy they got over there, the Nico, whatever his name is. Flacco, of course. He should say that, but he's not saying that. I think he's kind of blanketing it, and I think he's kind of really going at everybody, and it's really disrespectful on the low. What do you think? Let me know. Ooh, fuck, nigga. Damn, what the fuck? Oh, wait, you can't play Madden, bitch. What? You got it. Holy. Who you mad at? Oh, my bad. Not only based off of that little clip you just heard right there, but these little side dudes that academics keeps on his podcast are lame as hell. Nothing short of it. Let's go. Why you what mad at this Oh no! Nah, I was cooking some nigga in my in my server because um, and from because I I was beating a nigga ass in Madden. I think there, there there's a little bit proximity with Adam and people with drugs, and I think you know obviously people are gonna always like be a little bit upset about that. But I don't blame him with this Boonk thing because he scheduled an interview. He ain't know Boonk was going to be doing all that. He don't know if Boonk is trying to troll. It probably took him a while to realize, oh, no, this guy's really whatever. I don't blame him. But hear what I'm saying. <clears throat> if I want to be on some let me troll for views, let me try to clout shark or clout farm views, I could gas this shit and make it seem like he's some type of nigga who is trying to prey on black influencers who might be under the influence right and that would be disingenuous but it would give me a lot of views or i could sit here and i could tell y'all the truth about what i know about him right and what i'm trying to say is that when he allowed flacco to to talk talk to any nigga about me and that nigga doesn't have the best of you know um doesn't have really a, a a neutral interest in mind, and that nigga's trying to say some weird shit that you know you don't necessarily co-sign because you know me, why would you allow it to go out of your platform? Because I'm telling you, we both got platforms. I could amplify shit about you too. That's why I keep saying it's cool when they do it, but it ain't, it's a problem when I do it. I was... I was. This is what I was telling Flacco. I know. So, you, all right, all right, hold on, nigga. This, fuck, nigga. Flacco a slave. Fuck what that no, nigga no, got to no, say. No, I know, I know, no. But fuck no. Fuck to what make. Flacco got to say. That nigga is a fucking slave. Yeah, I don't hear nothing he got to say. This ain't got nothing to do with what he said. This I'm only saying. talking to Adam. Adam. All right, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Here's if point Adam, blank. Period. Do, yeah, is it okay? If it's okay if I run with this clip the same way you seem to be okay with agreeing with your bitch ass employees running with clips of me. Yeah, I don't really understand why you keep on, you know, doing this. You know, you keep on doing it. I might do it. Bro, just take the kid gloves off and go on handle business, bro. I mean, it's not like you guys, like I said earlier, have any type of mutual benefit with each other as far as business goes. You guys are all, uh, what do you call it, competing podcasts, competing content creators. You guys aren't really friends. I could see if it was like, you know, you guys really are friends behind closed doors. You say you talk to them and all this kind of stuff, but bro, y'all ain't really friends. Anybody can see that on the surface. We can just see that, bro. You keep on dancing around them. You keep on getting, you're getting mad at his employees and everything like that. So yeah, that's also another reason why I say that he's disrespectful towards the employees because he's, he's basically, he's, you know, he's calling them employees. They're not bosses to him and all this kind of stuff. That's disrespect talk. I don't care what anybody says. If somebody tells me I'm a peon or tells me that a group of people are a peon and I'm working for this guy, he's my master, he's my handler, something like that, that's disrespect, bro. I don't really care what anybody says. So you disrespecting the whole no jumper crew. Not that I care, but you are. And you keep on having the kid gloves on for Adam. Go ahead and handle your business. Stop playing. Just say what you want to say about Adam. There's nothing that you're going to really lose from saying something about adam i think most people would probably respect you if you went ahead and said something about him but you sitting up here like can i do it do am i allowed master yeah man but that's it man let me know what y'all think about it man just an another silly beef bit video and you know we got to have some entertainment here got now let me know what you think if you watched up to this point thanks for watching have a great day and i'll see you next time